Are we filming? Are we filming now? Say hello. Hi. Hello. Say hello. Yeah. We are here today to do our first ever book haul on this channel. So I'm very excited. I have a order to unbox. I have three books that I purchased recently. So let's get started. So we'll start with the ones that if you saw my vlog yesterday, then you know about these video, um, these two books because I featured them briefly. Um, but the first one was, it's this one. Oh, do you like it? Maybe in another life by Taylor Jenkins Reid. We are big fans of Taylor Jenkins Reid in this house. I've read um, The Seven Husbands of Ed Evelyn Hugo, Daisy Jones and the Six, and Malibu Rising. So I saw this one, I was like, probably gonna like it. So I bought it. I did. What do you think? Yeah? Is it good? Okay, I'm glad you approve. It's really important that she approves. The next book I got was the Lincoln Highway. What do you think? Is this one good too? Is this one gonna do? Okay, it's approved. So I keep getting this book recommended to me everywhere. I'm not entirely sure what it's about. Let me just see the synopsis by the same guy who wrote A Gen Gentleman in Moscow, which I also haven't read, but my mom read A Gentleman in Moscow, and she said she really liked that book. For some reason, there's something about this book that really draws me to it. I'm not entirely sure why. In June 1954, 18-year-old Emmett Watson is driven home to Nebraska by a warden of the juvenile work farm where he has just served 15 months for involuntary manslaughter. His mother long gone, his father recently deceased, and the family farm foreclosed upon by the bank. Emmett's intention is to pick eight-year-old Billy and head to California where they can start their lives anew. Emmett discovers that two friends from work farm have hidden themselves in the trunk of the warden's car. Okay, okay, <laughs> that's funny. Together they have hatched an altogether different plan for Emmett's future, one that will take them on a faithful journey in the opposite direction to the city of New York. And it just takes place over 10 days. I think I'm probably gonna like this because I love a good road trip story. So this seems very interesting. But like I said, I didn't know what it was about when I bought it, but the next book I got was a pre-order. Um, first of all, let's just take a moment to admire this cover. Very psychedelic, love this. What do you think, Pebbles? No, she prefers her Chewy. She's like, um, I have my Chewy, so I'm good. So this one's called A Thousand Steps. And I was, I was browsing Barnes and Noble and I came across this book and I was so intrigued. And I'll tell you why, because it takes place in the 1960s. I am obsessed with the 60s. So always have been, always will be. So I was like sold. Los Angeles in the 60s sold <laughs> and um, it ended up being a pre-order I didn't even know like this book is brand spanking new I don't even I don't think I've ever heard of this author or anything <sighs> Laguna Beach California which okay love Laguna Beach um, the age of Aquarius is in full swing Timothy Leary is a rock star LSD is God folks are flocking to Laguna seeking peace love and enlightenment I'm like okay and that's about where I stopped and just pre-ordered. <laughs> Seriously. But let's read on. 16-year-old Matt Anthony is just trying to get by. His mom's a stoner. His deadbeat dad's a no-show. His brother's fighting in Nam. And his big sister Jazz has just gone missing. Cops. The cops figure she's just another runaway hippie chick enjoying a summer of love. But Matt doesn't believe it. Not after another missing girl turns out dead on the beach. Ooh, what did I pick here? Ooh, okay, that that just that just went south real quick. That wasn't what I was expecting this book to be about, but let's read on. <clears throat> In a town where the cops don't trust the hippies and the hippies don't trust the cops, uncovering what really happened to Jazz is going to force Matt to grow up fast if it's not already too late. A Thousand Steps is a thriller, incisive coming-of-age story and a vivid portrait of the turbulent time and place by 
three-time Edgar Award winner and New York Times bestselling officer T. Jefferson Parker. Okay, well, I've never heard of T. Jefferson Parker, so my bad. Okay, so this is going to be good. I'm pretty sure. I'm really excited about this one. Okay, and now, the piece de resistance. I placed an order on Barnes & Noble, and I have scissors, too. I'm prepared. So excited. I don't remember everything I ordered. It's pretty standard, right? Let's see. I'm cutting away from myself, not responsible with scissors. Okay, it's open. Woo! So fun. Okay, we got packing. Okay. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. That is funny. Okay. <laughs> I have another Taylor Jenkins read book. Oh my God, how funny. One True Loves. Okay, I kind of remember this. I thought this sounds so cute. I thought this would be a cute like spring read. I don't know. I love those light, fluffy little romance novels in the springtime. Um, so... In her 20s, Emma Blair marries her high school sweetheart, Jesse. They build a life for themselves far away from the expectations of their parents and people in their hometown in Massachusetts. Oh, New England. Oh, my favorite location. Um, they travel the world together. Emma is a freelance writer. Jesse as a production assistant on nature documentaries. Ooh. Living life to the fullest, seizing every opportunity for adventure. Ooh, I like that. Their first wedding, on their first wedding anniversary, Jesse is on an assignment in the Aleutian Islands when his helicopter goes missing over that Pacific. Over that Pacific, excuse me. Just like that, Jesse is gone forever. Okay, yeah, I remember this now. It's coming back to me. Emma quits her job, moves home in an effort to put her life back together. Years later, now in her 30s, Emma runs into an old friend, Sam, finds herself falling in love again. When Emma and Sam get engaged, it feels like Emma's second chance at happiness. That is until Jesse is found. It's like sold. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. I have two new Day Taylor Jenkins read books. Okay, so they're probably gonna be fabulous because every book I've read by her, I mean, I've only read three, but those three I have absolutely loved. So <laughs> that's just funny. I'm glad I didn't buy the same book. <laughs> so the next book, this is another book that I just kept seeing everywhere and it's like it's following me so i had to get it the yellow wife and the cover is really pretty too and i know it takes place on a plantation antebellum um so it's about yeah one woman's captivating tale of survival in the most notorious slave prism of the antebellum south i was like okay go on do I really want to know any more than that? No, I don't think I do. So <laughs> it's about a slave prison in Virginia and it seems like it's gonna be really good. This would be good for February. Black History Month, this would be a good book to read in February. Okay, so Yellow Wife. Sadiqua Johnson, I think is her name. Oh, there's a sticker on it. Oh, why did they do that? Why did, it, why? I'll just take that off. Thank you. <laughs> Do they not know that we're going to take the stickers off? Have they not figured it out yet? Okay. So the, the next book here is I absolutely love Reese Witherspoon. I love how much of a, like I follow her on Instagram. Instagram actually made me fall in love with her. I just like, oh my God, she's so fun. And she has a book club and I've read a lot of the books that she's recommended through her book club and they've always been really good and I love the movies she puts out in the TV shows based on books that I've read you know um, yeah Big Little Lies, Wild, all those she's put out and they're all great so I saw this book and I thought you know this this might be really good so it's called LA Weather and who's it by? Maria Escano. Oh no, I will butcher that. So here you go. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't want to butcher. I hate butchering people's names. It, it, it kills my soul little bit by little bit every time I mispronounce someone's name. So not going to do it. But it's also Reese's book club pick. So that's basically why. But the book has something to do with, oh, <laughs> LA is parched and dry to the bone. And Oscar, the weather obsessed patriarch of the Alvarado family, desperately wants a little rain. He's harboring a costly secret that distracts him from everything else. His wife, Kyla, is desperate for a life with more intimacy and less weather channel. <laughs> what is wrong with this guy? He's obsessed with the weather channel? Okay. She feels she has no choice but to end their marriage. Their three daughters, Claudia, Claudia a television chef with a hard-headed, hard-hearted attitude. Olivia, a successful architect who suffers from the gentrification guilt. And Patricia, a social media wizard who has an uncanny knack for connecting with audiences but not with her lovers, are blindsided and left questioning everything they know. Each will have to take a critical look at their own lives and make some difficult decisions along the way. Hmm. I don't know. I thought it had something to do with the weather, but family, family drama. I think it might be good. Oh, this one's big. <laughs> so the magician by uh, Colum. I think that's how you say their name. He's Irish. Oh, I'm not even going to try the last name, but I think you say Colum. I think that's how it's pronounced. Um, to me, it looks like Tobin. I don't, that's not right. That cannot be right. Tobin, that can't be right. Let me know. How do you say his last name? Because I, I say Tobin, and I know that's not right. Every time I say it, I'm like, that's wrong. But anyways, it's The Magician. I read Brooklyn by him. I read it on a flight home from New York, and I think I read it in like one sitting on the plane. It was so good. I love that book. And I saw the movie too. I like the movie. Um, let's see. This has to do with World War II. That's right. I forgot. This has to do. Oh, actually, it takes quick. Um, oops, you dropped your chewy. Oh, no. Here you go. Oh, no. There's your chewy. It's like takes place over a quarter of a century or half a century, but it has to do with World War II. How do I even put this into words? Oh my God, there's like a lot going on. Opens in a provincial German city at the turn of the 20th century where a boy, Thomas Mann, grows up with a conservative father, found propriety and a Brazilian mother alluring and unpredictable. Young man hides his artistic aspirations from his father and his homosexual desires from everyone. He is infatuated with the son of one of the richest and most cultured Jewish families in Munich and marries the daughter. He and Katya have six children. In the novel Budenbrooks, he writes about his own family. On holiday in Italy, he longs for a boy he sees on the beach and writes a novella, Death in Venice. When Katya spends six months in a sanitarium, he writes Magic Mountain. He's the most successful wait he is expected to lead the condemnation of hitler whom he underestimates his old, old, oldest daughter and son leaders of the bohemianism and the anti-nazi movement share lovers in 1933 man flees germany to switzerland france and ultimately american arriving first in princeton new jersey and then los angeles yeah so this is i didn't read about all that it, it like I think the synopsis when I picked this book had something to do with the magician is an intimate and astonishing complex portrait of man and his magnificent wife Katya and the times in which they live the first world war rise of Hitler world war two cold cold war and exile see and that was like ooh, I love that will be so interesting to s anyone's read this book let me know but don't tell me too much don't spoil anything but the more have you ever just read a synopsis and felt more confused and lost than before? Because, oh. but like Brooklyn was so straightforward. I just, I'm so confused. Okay, anyways, last book here. I feel like I'm gonna sneeze. I wanted a good thriller because I just love having thrillers. So I got Every Vow You Break. And I've seen, this is another one that's just been everywhere. It's been on my radar for a while. 
so I decided to get it. <laughs> How's your bone? Oh, is it that good? Well, you want to sniff this one? I haven't let you sniff bo um, books lately. What do you think? You like this one? Okay, good. So she's like, yeah, it's good. <laughs> oh yeah, so this is about a girl who has a one night stand the night before her wedding. <laughs> And like, I guess things go south, like as they should. As I read that, I was like, ooh, ooh, that sounds uh, like a lot of drama. Um, yeah. Yeah, and then he like, the guy she has a one night stand with shows up and she's like trying to pretend like it never happened and he like shows up and blackmails her or something every value break. So anyways, let me know if any of these books sound interesting to you at all. Here, we'll do, okay, got it. There they all are. <laughs> Woo! So it waits. One, two, three. <laughs> so, anyways, those are all the books I got. <laughs> um, oh, let me know if you've read any of those, if any of those sound interesting to you, or just let's discuss in the comments, okay? So, I hope everyone has a great night. See you in the next video. There she is, Matilda. So, we will see you all in the next video. Everyone have a good night. Say bye. Bye.